Hello YouTube. Today we're going to look at the Ruger Lightweight Carry Pistol or LCP. This is the original LCP. They just came out with the LCP2 which corrects a lot of the shortcomings of this gun. But it is a popular pocket gun and so we're going to take a look at it. Um, as it is a pocket gun, it is uh, melted or buttered or rounded, however you want to describe it. Basically there are no 90 degree angles on it. There's nothing that should snag on clothing in your pocket. Uh, so that's, you know, it's the fundamental design characteristic of a pocketable pistol is that you can get it out of your pocket. Uh, six round magazine, nothing fancy there. Uh, not a whole lot of features on it. The magazine release is not ambidextrous or anything. It does have a slide lock, um, but it is not uh, magazine actuated, so that it does not lock open on the last round based on the magazine. So uh, the slide lock, purely manual operation. The sights are integrated into the firearm itself and are essentially too small to be useful, making it problematic to shoot at night. Uh, many of the things that I will list as problematic are things that have been altered for the LCP2, um, but still this is a, you know, as pocket guns go, it's not too shabby. It is a double action only, uh, so you see the hammer, that's actually in a half cock position, um, but you still have to cock the hammer most of the way before it drops and there is no second strike so the hammer once it's in the full cock position uh, does not reset until the sl uh, slide is racked and then you still have a long or reasonably long double action pull uh, the reset is one of the other features that people have complained about because it is a two-stage reset so you will hear one click but you're not really reset and then you actually come all the way out for the full reset. All the way out is not unexpected because it is double action only, but the uh, false reset can be problematic if you're not paying attention to it. So that's uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, one other nice feature is this polymer frame is not the serialized part. There's a metal uh, insert that holds all the guts that's the serialized part. Normally that's a great thing because you can then you know replace the frame without having to deal with shipping an actual firearm because it's just another part, it's not the serialized part. And I've seen that Ruger, at least for a time, made this in different colors, but it turns out if you call them, you can no longer just buy a frame. If you want the frame replaced or changed, you have to send it into them, which I think kind of stinks, but um, mainly because this one's broken. That's how I acquired it, $9. Uh, but uh, I've actually, super glued part of the frame back on obviously i wouldn't shoot it in this condition because well i don't want uh the slide to come flying off into my face or uh, to die horribly so i've just glued it together for demonstration purposes but until i send it to ruger for replacement i'm kind of hosed hopefully it won't be too much so let's uh let's take it down um this pin is a takedown pin as well as the cam pin for the barrel but it doesn't come through the other side uh, so you have to get either a thumbnail or a tool under it. Um, in my case, mine's you know fairly loose, so it pops right out. Uh, if you do have to get something under it, it's uh, not a big deal. You can just a uh, <clears throat> little screwdriver or pin, anything that will let you get behind that and get it started. And what you can see here is the pin actually has a, a narrower bit there, and there is a cross pin spring that that retains it so that's what you're that's really all you're pushing past is just getting over that little lip at which point the uh, slide comes off from the frame set the frame aside recoil spring is not captivated um, it is a metal recoil rod with a double coil spring I think my coil needs to be replaced uh, nothing unusual about that double coils are not uncommon in guns that are very small like this. Um, I believe the Colt Mustang, uh, upon which the SIG 238 and 938 are based, originally had a double coil spring before they went to a single coil. Um, uh, an important thing if you're building spring things is that uh, if you need a double coil spring, you always use coil springs wound in opposite directions. If they were wound in the same direction, they would tend to bind, oops, 
Now I just lock them together. They would tend to bind when they compressed. If they are coiled in opposite directions, that just can't happen. So they just slide past each other. Anywho, <clears throat> there is a small recess for that to sit when you're assembling it so it stays centered. Um, the takedown pin is also the the cam pin that moves the barrel. Uh, so when you when a barrel is forward and, and locked up, it's like this. When you fire it, barrel begins to move back. This pin is then going to ride up this ramp. Um, and of course the pin is in the frame, so the pin doesn't move, but the barrel does. So barrel begins to come back, imparts a lot of momentum to the slide, and then gets pulled down and separates from the slide. And the slide continues rearward uh, for its full recoil stroke, but the barrel itself only moves this far. Uh, when the slide comes back and encounters the barrel again, it will push along this this ramp this time. So this side brings it down, this part back here lifts it back up. So uh, we start from locked up, we fire, we bring the barrel down, recoil happens, and then the barrel gets pushed back up and again into the locked position. Just like every other cam locked uh, gun, just happens to lock on the pin. Uh, the slide is very simple. There's no firing pin safety. Um, so you have a roll pin, and notice it comes out the center on the top, but uh, it's off to one side on the bottom. Uh, that's so that uh, they didn't have to put the roll pin all the way through uh, where the hammer would rub against it. So this way, this roll pin never gets you know any abuse, and there's no you know misshapen part on this. Uh, but by putting it at an angle, they can cut across more of the firing pin and retain the firing pin more solidly. Whereas if they had just put the whole thing offset, it would barely uh, interact with the firing pin at all. And the extractor is a little novel. We'll get there in a second. Let's go ahead and grab a roll pin punch and knock this guy out. Now, um, uh, when you do this, once the punch and the roll pin are clear, this is under spring tension, and so it will launch. So make sure you keep a hand over it at the uh, appropriate time if you don't want to go chasing parts all over the floor. And remember, of course, that you're hammering that in at an angle, not straight up and down. So once I pull this out, uh, there we go. The firing pin is free to pop out along with its spring. And I will confess this has not been completely cleaned, so that's why it didn't just launch out on its own. Uh, again, like we said, the roll pin um, interacts with this groove on the firing pin, so that's where it moves back and forth. And uh, it, because it comes you know, nearly 40% of the way in uh, at the ends of, the, of its travel path, it, it, it locks pretty evenly onto the shape of the roll pin, so it doesn't wear the roll pin out. If a roll pin only partially engaged the firing pin, the firing pin would eventually like saw it in half. And as you can see, this roll pin really hasn't taken very much abuse at all. Uh, you don't see a big, you know, half moon cut out like you see on some firearms where that's not been spaced quite right. So they did it right. This is a standard coil spring. It's not directional. Um, firing pin is uh, not inertial either, which means that uh, let me find a punch. Um, when the firing pin is hit by the hammer, uh, it actually, you know, when the hammer will push the firing pin that far and the firing pin is protruding at that point. So an inertial system is where the hammer stops at some point and the firing pin continues. This one's not like that. It has a very hefty firing pin spring. The hammer has to hit it and carry it all the way forward uh, for it to actually function. set this all aside for a second and deal with the extractor now this is an interesting uh, extractor design basically there's a blind hole and in so you have the extractor you have a detent and then a spring all of which you can't get to it's not accessible from the back it's not you know it doesn't reach all the way to the firing pin channel it is truly a blind hole but you do have this little access port 
And if you look carefully at the access port, I'm not sure how well this shows up on the camera, but you can see a hole in the detent that you can see through the hole in the side of the slide. And what you need to do is basically get something into that hole all the way. And so I use a, a punch and um, as a general rule, if I can get the extractor and move the extractor uh, out a little bit at the same time, I can get the punch in there. And now what I can do now is since this is a 1 16th inch punch, by the way, once it's all the way in there, when I rotate it forward, you can probably, hopefully anyway, see the detent move back just a little bit. And so when I lean that forward, that's just enough to disengage it from the extractor and let the extractor flip forward. Now on the extractor, this uh, rear area, it's very slight engagement. It barely hangs on to that, that detent there. And so that's why, you know, moving it just that far back, you know, now it's easier to see it move a little bit. Um, so watch as I move the pin, you should, well, probably easier if this perfectly is stationary. As I move the pin, you see the, the, the detent move back ever so slightly. That's really all you have to move it back to be able to disengage it. Now, once I yank this punch out, the spring and detent will launch. So you want to make sure you hang on to that, cover that with your fingers so that you don't lose the spring and detent. And now, you can get into that blind hole with you know whatever you need to clean it and again if you look at the shape of the detent you can see that yeah it really is that small uh, little engagement area that's the whole thing and so by getting the punch into that hole you're able to move it back just enough to to disengage it and it is a fairly hefty spring uh, so it doesn't naturally come out on its own and that's it. There's no more parts. That's the, the whole thing. So getting it together is fairly straightforward as well. It's essentially the opposite of what we just did to take it apart. Um, when you put this in, uh, what we're going to do, whoops, let's flip it over where nobody can see it. We're going to line it up so we can see that hole again. And then we're going to use a punch to drive it back and once again use the small punch to hold it in place so we're going to find actually i'm going to use this screwdriver because i've actually cut a v shape into the tip of this screwdriver which is going to let it hang on to this a little bit better if you have a, a large punch it'll probably suit it may slip off a little bit but the most important part here is just that we got to get that hole mostly lined up before we push this back and once we push it in again Get the punch in there to hold it in place. <clears throat> let's see, before I put the extractor in, let's take a one last look at it. Uh, it does sit in the gun at an angle, which allows it to be a little meatier an extractor, um, uh, but it makes it you know, strange to look at. So this is how it actually sits if we were looking straight at the breech face. It comes in at this angle, but the extractor claw itself is straight up and down. It does have this angle cut at the bottom that helps it come up over the edge of a, of a round. Uh, so if a round is coming out of the magazine, it won't cut into it. If that were a sharp, pointy corner, it would stub out on the rounds. It also has this angle here cut back so that if a round is in the chamber and the slide closes over it, it can snap over the edge of the round. And that's what that shape is for, is to help it snap out before it grabs onto the round. So, <clears throat> getting it back together is essentially the same. Now that we've got that all in there, we're going to set this in place, and we're just going to, if you have a really strong thumb, you can just push on it and it'll snap in, but I find it easier to relieve some of the pressure with the punch again. And once that's flush, pop the punch out, and uh, you know, then just check the extractor to make sure it's moving freely. Good to go. And then we just got to get the firing pin and uh, its system back into place. And here we just got to make sure that this cutout part of the firing pin ends up lined up with that hole. And I'm going to use uh, a punch to help me out here as well. 
I can find the right size punch that will fit into that hole. Yeah, that'll work. So I'm going to use one punch to push this guy in. And uh, once he's here, I can use this extra space here to kind of line it up so that that uh, cutout is, is leaning in the right direction. And then I'm just going to push this guy, whoops, push it in and lose control. So again, line him up, turn him over. <laughs> and get this piece ready to go in. And like I said, that's a substantial spring, so I, I, if I had a fatter punch, this would be a little bit easier. Alright, uh, there we go. So now I've just pushed a punch in place of where the roll pin's going to go, but that lets me assure that the firing pin is essentially lined up right. Now I'm going to back that punch off and just enough room to get the roll pin started. Essentially I'm going to uh, hammer the roll pin. I'm going to hang on to this at the same time, keep my hand over the back in case everything falls apart so that I catch it all, and I'm going to start driving this roll pin in. And once it's most of the way in, it will have pushed the punch most of the way out, but it'll it'll will be retaining the firing pin. And then I can use the roll pin punch to come in and uh, drive this guy home, uh, like so. And again, check your firing pin to make sure it's moving freely and you didn't manage to bind it on the roll pin or anything. And that, that's the slide. Um, one other note about the barrel is it's got this bell end, and uh, that actually is uh, kind of an important thing. If the barrel were a perfect cylinder all the way to the end, um, it would not, you wouldn't be able to take it out because when, when it was in here, um, it, if it were a perfect cylinder and I went to, ro to, to, to move this, to, to, to lift it out, now I've angled that cylinder. In order for that to work, this hole would have to be much larger, which means when it was closed, there would be wiggle room. This this barrel would be flipping around in here. By using this bell-shaped end, that lets me rotate that barrel in the same amount of space. So while this is rotating, the actual diameter at the end of the slide you know, that doesn't actually change. So as it's tipping in on this end, it's coming out on that end. Basically. It lets you make it so that this has a much tighter seal to the slide with uh, with no actual play, or very little anyway, compared to if it were a perfect cylinder. The shorter your barrel, the more important something like that is. Um, once you get to a four or five inch barrel, then yeah, you're not moving it enough to make a difference, but they still make you know 1911s with match bushings that are really tight there and have a slightly wider end for just that reason. But uh, um, again, with that bushing, you know, there's not a lot of tipping going on at that point. So anyway, in, in order to make it so you can actually get this thing apart, that's what that bell design is all about. And so we'll put the uh, captivated spring system back in. Like I said, it's got that cutout in the barrel to hang on to it. And that's our slide. <coughs> now. Our frame. Um, the frame is uh, held in with some interesting things. So this uh, aluminum insert that holds most of the parts uh, sits into the frame and it's held in by this pin and this pin. And the main spring is actually a uh, spring under extension, not compression. And it's, uh, we can't see what it's looped around because this little base plate is in the way. So the first thing we have to do is take the take this base plate off. Uh, there's a hole in the back where you can push in on a small uh, tab of plastic that goes into that base plate. And mine is, I just replaced mine so it's very stiff. Uh, I'm gonna use a screwdriver to help lift it out at the same time as I'm pushing in on the tab. 
There we go. So once that tab is pushed in, then we can slide this out. And that reveals the pin and the, uh, the mainspring going over it. So I find it easiest to get the mainspring off first. Uh, it's not critical. It's just... You have to be careful here. The mainspring is just seated into a little uh, groove in the frame itself. Um, and it just doesn't have a whole lot of places it can go when the spring is under tension. But now I've got to actually lift the spring off this pin. And if I lift the pin up at the same time and then I lose control of the spring, it's going to send this tiny pin flying all over the place. So what I recommend is use your fingers to cover this uh, a little bit so that if you do slip off the mainspring that you don't end up launching this pin because right now you know the pressure of the spring is holding the pin in place but as i'm undoing it it's very easy to get this pin moving left or right and you know when that spring bounces back against it it's going to fling it so i'm going to try and hold it like that grab the spring and whoops grab the spring too close to it and fail grab the spring a little bit further away Mm. <laughs> these are like the worst pliers in the world uh, I'm trying to see if I have another pair oh, let me try that one more time with the crappy pliers and then maybe we'll hunt down some better ones more than one way to skin a cat. We can actually cheat and lift up by one of the coils and relax the spring that way. You just want to make sure you don't lose this is the key because nothing, you know, it's while it does sit in these grooves without the spring pulling on it, anything will send it flying. <clears throat> we'll get a better look at that spring in a minute once we get it out all the way out. So go ahead and drop these two pins uh, these are just polymer pins so don't wail away on them they're fragile um, but uh, cheap so you can replace them easily but uh, crap I dropped it dropped it into a pile of ammunition. Uh, now hopefully I won't actually crack my entire frame off again where it's glued together. Okay. Now, <clears throat> these uh, these pins are uh, the same, by the way. They, they do tend to get a little bit bent out of shape, but they are dimensionally the same from the factory. Now, <clears throat> There's one other mechanism. I'm holding this down right now because I don't if I don't really want it to pop up yet. This pin here is holding a a, a disconnector and spring system that is really kind of strange. But uh, basically, uh, right now there's a piece in there that's under spring tension that wants to bring it all the way to the rear of the gun, but it's tucked under the hammer, so it's here. As we lift this up and away, this piece is going to snap to the back, and we're going to hear that. So as you go to pull this out, you hear that snap. And what we can see is that little piece right there, if you can see that, just pop to the back. We'll, we'll get a better view of it momentarily. Uh, so from here, the whole thing should just lift right out. Um, and... There we go. We're going to set this one aside and just take a quick look at this part so you get an idea of what was going on. This here was at an angle very far forward and tucked into the hammer itself. It hangs onto the hammer. And so once we lift that out, it then flips all the way to the back. So when we go to put it back together, we will also have to push it forward as we lower that piece back in. We're going to take the whole thing out when we talk about function, but for now... Let's break into the uh, into the meat of it. 
So uh, this little aluminum frame is actually pretty pretty well designed. Uh, these springs, um, the the millwork that that creates the passage for these it's actually got a bit of an undercut so these springs when they're new anyway uh, stay pretty well in their slots now this one's been stepped on so it doesn't stay in there perfectly but this one is really good so I don't yeah, generally recommend removing these any uh, from the the frame itself if you don't have to what I do is uh, just take a little hobby knife so this is the the slide lock mechanism it also is the ejector so when the round is pulled out of the chamber this is what it bounces against that sends it flying and it also is what intercepts the slide on the way forward uh, but it's held in there just by the tail end of the spring so if I just lift that spring up a little I don't have to take it all the way out of the frame just enough uh, for this piece to clear it and uh, it can come out and the spring can stay in its little cubby hole. If you do pull this in and out, you will start to wear out the little, you know, overhang that it, that it hugs into. So I don't recommend pulling that spring out unless you're replacing it. Um, so that's the left side. The right side is where all the action happens. So this pin is the hammer pin. And as we said, this spring operates under, um, extension not tension so it's not pushing against something it's pulling on the front of the hammer trying to pull the hammer uh, all the way into the firing pin the trigger um, is going to operate the trigger bar so when I pull the trigger this little thing goes forward which pulls the whole trigger bar forward the trigger bar is also being pushed upwards by this spring and this pin which is also the hammer pin sticks out just enough through this side to, to sit in the window, which means as this uh, trigger is pulled forward, it will also be pulled down just a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just launched the whole thing at my face. Uh, let me put that back together real quick and do that once more with my thumb holding everything in place so we can actually see that. So as we pull the trigger, uh, it will also uh, inherently um, pull down on this. So normally the trigger bar is going to have the hammer there and you'll see as I pull the trigger the hammer is going further back but because this bar is going to be pushed lower and lower it's going to slip off the back of the hammer right about there at which point that spring um, would pull the hammer the rest of the way forward. So try and do that all at once uh, yeah, so my trigger bar has got the hammer as I pull it back it reaches that drop point and it's no longer this underside of the trigger is no longer engaged um, with the hammer <laughs> once again I launch it so uh, as you've figured out by now watching me launch this twice this spring wraps around and tucks into a tiny groove under the trigger bar uh, obviously the frame keeps it from flying apart normally or the yeah the body of the frame uh, taking it apart is as simple as releasing that spring letting it come to the forward position and then the bar just lifts off um, likewise the hammer here once this pin is out the whole hammer mechanism comes out and uh, we can talk just a little bit <clears throat> about how that works so this trigger bar is going to grab the hammer right by the back of it there and uh, and pull the hammer all the way cocked until it slides underneath it and then the hammer can come forward so this front of this and this this edge right here is the hammer and sear engagement area on the trigger bar so that's the double action pulling of the hammer and then when it slides underneath it then the hammer can go forward <clears throat> excuse me now the trigger itself is is kind of neat there's um the polymer trigger then there's a metal insert uh, and the spring inserted into the metal insert and all of that is held together by a, a little plastic pin that just comes right through the middle of the whole kit and caboodle 
So to get that out, you want to orient it more or less so you can see the top of that pin. And then you come and you can push that pin out by just pushing up on it from the middle of the underside of the trigger. So now my punch is there, and this is what that pin looked like. So I just pushed that pin right out. Once I take this out, um, the spring can come out, the uh, metal cylinder can come out of the trigger, and the trigger itself comes out the bottom. So how that all was going in there is, here you can see the hole in this, this the metal insert, and likewise, now that we can see the whole spring, it's got a, a loop on the inside. Now that loop is going to sit um, right where the hole is. And so we have the spring going into the metal insert with the loop lining up with the hole, and then the metal insert going into the plastic trigger, and again, lining up with the hole. And then this pin... Uh, holding all of it together. Uh, if you're more coordinated than I am, that demonstration would have worked better. So let's try that again. There we go. So with that pin in place, now it's through the loop in the spring, which means the spring can't freely rotate. Once it gets to here, it's under tension, and we're actually winding that spring. Um, so while it looks floppy here, it is you know still got that. It, you know, the loop of the spring is being held by the that pin, so we have plenty of tension by the time we bring it back here to lift up on that trigger bar, keeping the trigger bar wanting to be held as high as it can be positionally, and it's also the return force, which after you pull the trigger, returns the trigger to the forward position. So it has two functions at once. It's your trigger return spring and it's your trigger bar lift spring. Um, and again, all held together by the pin in the middle. I'm going to leave this uh, partially assembled for now, just because it might be helpful illustrating something later. Um, ah, the disconnect. So uh, there's a spring there's the actual disconnector itself and then the pin that it's on. I recommend that you push the pin out towards the, the right side of the gun, so from the left to the right, and you'll see why momentarily. That pin is actually <clears throat> not a uniform pin. It's, it's straight across where it goes through the disconnect, but it's got a narrower area where the coil spring is so that when that coil spring compresses, it, it, it fits in that little it's got a little bit more room to compress. I don't think it really needs it, but anyway, um, once those are apart, we can just go in there with a screwdriver <clears throat> and pop them out. And uh, now we can see how these guys interacted. So this spring has a leg that goes into there. The whole thing is rotating around that pin and then this leg is pushed up against the back of the frame so this wants to push towards the back if something pushes it towards the front it wants to come back and uh, it's kind of a novel mechanism and I'm going to try and show you how it interacts with the hammer to get the job done so uh, it actually is what catches the hammer in that uh, half cock position, so to speak. And um, when you're pulling the trigger, what's going to happen is, is as it comes forward, it's going to bump into this, and that's going to cam these surfaces basically meet like this. So it, it's it's on the roll pin. The curved part there is, is seated on the roll pin, but as uh, the trigger bar pulls the hammer it's going to cause this thing to be cammed down. So this curved surface here is going to get pushed on by uh, the, the hammer, hammer itself. And what that's going to do is it's going to push it off of 
uh, that pin. So then the hammer um, strike happens and it falls all the way forward. And now this piece wants to get back under there. So the hammer has struck when this piece is pushed all the way out of the way. The slide comes back and that would normally uh, cock the hammer. And it is it's gonna cock the hammer all the way back, letting this piece um, pop back behind this. So when the hammer comes forward, now it's intercepted it again. I'm gonna try and maybe illustrate that uh, in the gun and see if it might make it a little bit clearer. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, throw the hammer on the outside maybe. Sometimes, sometimes that helps. So, uh, in the normal position, now remember, it's under spring tension, so it wants to come as far backwards as it can. Uh, but we're going to take it from that resting half cock position. So as you're pulling the trigger, the hammer is coming back and pushing this further out of the way. And then the gun's going to uh, fire. The trigger bar itself, uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> the hammer comes forward and, wow, how do I illustrate all this at once? Uh, so the trigger bar is pulling along that and it's going to get itself into that position. Wow. It's really hard to describe all of this stuff at once, uh, but the basic bottom line is that uh, this is going to be, have just been pushed out of the way before the hammer strike, and um, when the hammer comes back, uh, because the slide is moving, that puts it in a position where it can catch the hammer on the way forward again. So. Um, yeah, basically, you know, the, the, uh, the trigger bar itself, uh, pushes it out of the way, uh, for the initial hammer strike so it can fall, but then the trigger bar is pushed even further down and ends up, uh, basically out of the way where this can then pop back up immediately. So this is is part of that disconnection. Um, it'll probably make more sense when it's put back together. So we'll try and describe that again as we get all the parts back in. Uh, the only other thing we haven't taken apart at this point is the uh, magazine release. It's a real simple release. It's not reversible or anything. Um, I will tell you that I'm not going to take it out right now just because it's really a pain in the butt. This is just a U-shaped spring with one leg longer than the other. So the U begins about halfway down and then comes far enough down to go into a hole that's just drilled into the top of this. And so when you push the, the magazine release in, you can see that this leg of the spring, you know, is actually going in, you know, through that little hole and, and is in the magazine release. The way that this chamber is cut, if you pull this out and, you know, it'll come right out, getting it back in is actually kind of a pain in the butt. The, it's just the way this channel is cut. If you just slide that U-shaped spring back in there, you'll miss the magazine release and get it stuck in the body of the frame. And because it took me like 20 minutes to get it back in the last time I took it out, I just don't want to do that again. Uh, so I'd recommend leaving that in there. If you do take it out, you'll it, it's, it's not rocket science as to how it goes back together. It's just a bit of a pain in the butt. So uh, let's reassemble this. So um, where did my punch go? I'm going to slide this pin out and take him apart. Again, we seat the trigger polymer trigger in there and then the metal insert uh, goes through and then uh, the spring itself and when you're putting this together you want the leg of the spring to be towards the front of the gun um, and that way when we drop the pin 
through all those parts uh, that'll create tension when it gets to uh, you know where we need to actually flip it so in 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 action it will be towards the back but when it's not under tension we want it towards the front and then make sure that that pin seats all the way down it'll it'll go uh, it, it's countersunk in the polymer so it'll it'll go down just below just beyond flush um, the hammer remember that the spring is going to be pulling on the hammer so it's looped over this roll pin that's forward of the pivot point so it pivots around its uh, its little pin and so the spring whoops the spring is pulling it down so bang 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 uh, and that lets you know which way is forward so don't put it in backwards and you just slide it up uh, from the bot from the bottom and then put the pin in uh, when it lines up and uh, keep your finger over the back because this pin is pretty loose uh, it's really held in place by the frame you don't want it dropping out on you so hang on to it um, you can then lay the trigger bar in place and it really all that matters is you get it hooked that little hole and the trigger bar goes over the, the front of it and the rest of it just pops onto the back and uh, then the spring you wind it back like that and slip it just so it lifts up on the underside of the trigger bar and there you can see that whole mechanism in play again. You can see it bringing the hammer forward and then that pin, because it protrudes just a little bit there, is going to cause it to slip off bottom right Boop. there. And then the hammer pulled forward. Uh, so holding all that together on that side, um, we want to put the slide lock back in. It, again, there's undercuts in the way this is milled, so make sure that you actually get it into the, uh, the grooves. And once you get it close to that piece, again, just lift up on the leg of the spring to get it tucked under there. And then... Uh, pop the spring back into place under tension and uh, for this piece the long leg is the top and so if that came out that's all you have to remember is the long leg goes on top and uh, its whole purpose in the world is to hold the uh, the cam pin in so that's that's the whole thing that's the hole the cam pin goes through and that's just to put tension on it so with all this held into place, whoops, uh, we have to put the disconnect back in. So I'm going to set that down for now and uh, put this guy back in. And so uh, we're going to start the pin in. And I like to do this from what is, I guess, technically the right side of the gun. I'm holding it this way so I can see it. But uh, we get that started. And uh, orientation-wise, uh, keep in mind that uh, this goes kind of towards the middle of the gun, and this goes more towards the outside. And it's actually, let's see if I can hold this maybe with pliers, because really what I'm trying to do is line it up with that pin and fail miserably. Let's try that again. Get it lined up on that pin. There we go. So that's fine. And now the tricky part. I'm going to pull that pin back just a bit so that it's just about flush, which should give me room to get this guy seated. But first, um, I just got to get the that short leg into the hole uh, in the disconnector itself. And there's no good lighting. There's no way to see in there, so it's kind of something you do a little bit by feel. And uh, once it goes in there, you drop it completely and start over. Um, all right, there's another way to do this. I'm going to see if I can't 
yeah, I'm going to grab this, bring some pliers this time. Again, get that leg, feel around for the hole in the side of the disconnect. Wish that I had a better way to show some light on it. How did I do that? Didn't even know that was possible. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, there we go. So get that in and then really you just got to get that spring down. Uh, and pushed so it's you know parallel with where the pin's going to go. Once it's pushed down, you can get the pin pushed in the rest of the way. So we're going to center that pin as best we can. And uh, now, as I mentioned, this is going to get in our way when we put the rest of the frame in there, but we'll show you how you deal with this. So again, picking this up carefully so I don't launch that spring. Let's try that again. So, holding the spring properly. Uh, remember, this the pin is flush on this side, so it protrudes just into the, the trigger bar on that side. Uh, I have to make sure that we lower the trigger into the trigger well, and the spring just dangles down into the magazine well. And uh, once those are both passed, straighten this out and uh, guide it down. Now. The back is not going to go all the way down because the disconnect is in the way. And what you do is you take either a small screwdriver or a small punch, uh, whichever, and you're just going to lift up just enough um, on the back of this so that you can reach in there and push the disconnect forward. So you'll, you can feel it pretty easily. It's harder to see it. It's just dark in there. Basically, you lift this up, you push that forward, and you pull it out while you're pushing it back down. And you'll know if it worked or not based on whether the hammer is in, is bumping into it. And, and it is, you'll feel it levering up on it. Um, you can also pull the hammer, have it come forward, and when it reaches that half cock, you'll hear it uh, click into place and you'll see it if you can Let's see. Uh, actually, I'm going to put the pins in first so I'm not holding it, and then I'll show you what that actually looks like on the inside. So again, once once we're sure that the disconnect is pushed uh, properly to the front and engaging the hammer, I'll show you a little bit how that looks. So the, uh, let's see, how to see this. Um, hopefully we, you can see in there um, what you're looking at is at the base of the hammer as I pull the trigger with my thumb you see the hammer start to go back up here but if you look down underneath you'll also see that disconnector being pushed towards the front and so when I reach that point there it's uh, it's held way to the back and the hammer is actually now clear of it so the trigger bar is engaged the disconnector and is currently holding the disconnector forward so that the hammer can come all the way forward. The hammer goes forward, gun goes bang. The first thing that's going to happen is the slide is going to cycle and push that down, which basically lets the uh, disconnector start to engage the hammer again. So um, now, when the hammer comes back to the right point, the disconnector is in position to catch it there. So uh, when we're talking about the resets, the first reset you hear is the trigger bar getting past the disconnector, and the second one is it actually getting past the back of the hammer. So that's what the two disconnects are. 
So again, the first one is cocking the hammer, but it's also going to pick up that disconnector. So now the hammer is free, gun goes bang, slide is uh, coming back. Um, as the slide is coming back, this disconnect happens, freeing the actual disconnector to engage with the hammer. The slide's going to cycle, and then the hammer can't come forward because it's now engaging again with the disconnector. So that's how it works. <clears throat> Pull the trigger, gun goes bang, disconnect happens, hammer gets cycled and gets caught on that disconnector. You let up and you hear the trigger bar get past the disconnector and then past the back of the hammer. So that's why you have to wait for both clicks for it to actually be able to fire. So here's the disconnection of the trigger bar and the sear. Whoops, let's try that again. So <clears throat> we pull the trigger, hammer goes bang, slide pushes down on the disconnector. There we go. Um, hammer comes back and gets cocked. <clears throat> right now the trigger bar is not touching, is, is not engaging either the disconnector or the hammer. As we let off the trigger, first we get to just engaging the disconnector, which isn't going to help us. Uh, it's not actually, well, that's just because there's no spring tension. It's not actually going to be able to move the hammer, it's just tugging on the disconnector, which doesn't do anything. The full reset is where it's now engaging the hammer again. And now we see it, you know, we move the trigger and we're moving the hammer. Uh, so the last tricky bit is getting um, the hammer spring back on this little pin. Uh, now, if you were paying attention, you notice that the hammer spring is on the left side of the hammer. So keep that in mind when you're you know, trying to line it up that that spring isn't going to be centered. It's going to be off to one side. And basically, again, you want to make sure you don't let this pin go flying. And you're going to try and just grab this piece Ow. and pull it up and over. <laughs> there we go. Up and over that pin. Um, once it's onto the pin, uh, you should uh, pay attention to whether it, you know, it, it's on the left side of the gun. So you want to slide it into that left groove of the pin. That way it doesn't move around and potentially mess up the disconnector. That whole pin, the, the spring is on this side of the gun, the disconnector is on this side of the gun. So once that's reattached, the back plate slips, or the butt plate rather, slips over it. There's the little plastic detent that pokes through the hole. So you have to push past that and it will snap and you can kind of see it in its hole. This will eventually wear out pretty quick. So it's not something you're fully taking apart all the time though. Um, if you've been, so now you can actually do that. The hammer fires, um, the disconnector catches it. This thing snaps around. That's all good. Uh, you do want the hammer to be in that rear position uh, when you put it on the slide. If you actually had pulled the trigger, which is not the best thing in the world to do for this gun, by the way. Um, if, but if you have left the hammer in the forward position, you won't be able to get the slide on. So make sure it is uh, in that half cocked orientation. And uh, just slip it back on the slide, slip the slide back on rather. And this pin, um, Basically, it'll it'll bottom out uh, right where the recoil begins to engage. I find it easiest to just put ever so slight amount of pressure on it, just to just to move it back a eighth of an inch or so, and that makes it easiest to slide this pin right through. Now, if I hadn't done it that way, and uh, it was just slipped on to where it naturally stopped and I tried to put the pin in, it was likely it's gonna either stick here or um, uh, here is the other place that it will stick. 
Now what's happening is, is it's it's halfway through the aluminum block, but it's not through this half because it's been moved off at a little bit of an angle. It's a little bit forward, maybe a little bit up. Again, by pushing that in and relieving some of the pressure, it's going to be much easier to line that up. Same with taking it out, It's it, uh, but mainly getting in it. If you stop there, don't hammer on it. You're just going to dent the far side. Just push a little bit in, and it should be able to seat right in properly. And uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, magazine is standard you know, magazine. We usually don't do magazines because they're pretty much all the same. A little floor plate here. So you can push in on that and then the base comes off. The floor plate uh, sticks onto the spring. The spring goes up into the follower. You know, not, not a whole lot of rocket science there. Um, just push it all into place, slip the shoe back on, and detent pops up. Anyway, like I said, it doesn't have a last round lock back, so, uh, oops, manually lock it back. And that's it. LCP, lightweight carry pistol, six rounds of 380 ACP, good to go. Hope you enjoyed that. Stay safe.